next mm-hmm. yep. we have Ronnie Bandini, who <laughs> is a counterculture maker. We're very excited to hear more about his work and how that works for him. So, and, uh, if you want to know what this fax is that we just received, you'll have to keep sticking around. Yeah, you're gonna have to hang out and find out more. All right, Ronnie, take it away. Thank you, thank you very much. I will try to present the slides. Okay. Uh, my name is Ronnie Bandini. I am a maker and writer from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I I put this this slide to explain a little something about the the country. Argentina is right below Brazil and next to Chile and Uruguay. Maybe you know this country because of Lionel Messi and the soccer. Pope Francis, some some people know the country about the related to the tango dance and of course the best meat worldwide. And I wanted to start by sharing my personal experience with open source. Um, in my case, it all started around uh, middle 90s. At that time, I was working for a, a media company from Brazil websites in in those years were very different to the websites we have right now they were mostly static pages with corporate information and in the desktops computers that we received to work uh, in that company i found that i had a personal web server a small web server capable of running a new technology back then which was ESP active server pages. So I started to to try this new programming language and I was making small chatbots and then I was able to connect a database using the first, I think it was an access database and then SQL server and MySQL. And I ended up developing um, a software they wanted to to sell. But of course, being this uh, scripting technology, I thought, that it will be complicated to, to sell the, the product since anyone will be able to just stall all the work that I've done. But then I, I got in touch with the open source license and I released my software under open source. And this was uh, an excellent experience in, 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 in different ways that I thought. At first, I received a lot of contribution, a lot of support from a community, and I was still able to make a business related to the customizations mainly, and also to technical support. So this was my my first experience with open source, and from, from that moment to this day, I'm a big supporter of the open source movement, and whenever I can, I release my software and, and in this case my my machines with the source code under good licenses so that people will be able to to use them and and start things with with the work i've done the same way i i use the work of other people from the community i started to make machines i worked with software for several years but i started to make machines 10 years ago following the lead about a machine to read one book. That book is Rasuela in Spanish. And the name of this book in English is Hopscotch. It's a 1963 novel by Julio Cortázar. In fact, he referred to this book as the anti-novel because the reader is invited to rearrange the chapters. And I started to research, and in fact, there was no machine built, but I had the, I had found the, the schematics of not a machine, but more like a furniture. I think the main idea here was to print the chapters in sheets and put those sheets in drawers. Uh, let's not forget that we are talking about 1963, maybe a year later. So I've decided to create a machine using electronics, and I've got an Arduino Nano, I've got an OLED screen, a push button and selector, and I finally was able to build this machine, kind of absurd, kind of uh, artistic, designed just to create different paths to read this, this novel. And after this point, this was just the starting point, I, I I took all the references 
first of all from books, but then from other things that I found interesting to make machines. Here I have some examples, and um, not uh, I, I have more than, than than these ones, but just an example: a tiny Kindle just to read uh, Japanese poetry, haikus, a device with uh, machine learning to to stop the loud music from a neighbor, a tiny shawarma desktop shawarma, and a rain making machine that actually doesn't make it rain, but this is not important. At what point I started to realize that the machines I was making were not a good fit for maker culture. And I found this new term that in Spanish is contra cultura maker. And I think it's maker kind of culture. I'm not sure if there's something lost in the translation. It, it, it was a better term. First of all, kind of culture means of course an opposition to the to the main current of event to, to establish things the term is related to the united states in the 60s shakerwak on the road allen ginsberg hole but it could be applied to any similar circumstance like uh, the french bohem from the 1600s for example how do i relate these two terms maker culture and counterculture the idea is that maker culture is built on top of maker culture. It has the same dynamics, the same protocols, but it adds one restriction and one release. The restriction is that the machine or the device that we are making must be intended to oppose to the established order. And the release is the following. We are released from the need to seek a consensual utility. To illustrate this point, some years ago, the government of Buenos Aires hired a Russian company to for surveillance. And in, in the press at that time, they were telling the people that there was no option other than um, being identified with all the errors that could appear. In fact, one person was sent to jail by mistake. So this was the main current. And then I started to think, well, why? I, I maybe I will be able to make sunglasses with servo motors that disguise the the face features, maybe covering one eye and presenting a fake nose, and with a small circuit to detect the places where these cameras are installed to mount the system automatically. And this is just an example related to the first uh, rule of Contra Cultura Maker. Regarding the, the second one, the, the consensus and about the utility, if we add a motor to skate, everyone will agree that the a motor skate is something useful. But if we are talking about a rain-making machine that actually doesn't make it rain, it will be harder to find this consensus about the utility. And for this reason, we are exempt. Something more about this uh, rain-making machine, we usually tend to think about makers. Um, all makers are people connecting cables with an Arduino, but makers, of course, existed from before, even before the transistor. In this case, uh, this man in the slide is Juan Baigor Rivelar. He lived uh, he in the 1930s in Buenos Aires, started to experiment with the machine he built to detect minerals. And he realized that every time he turned on this machine, light rains started to appear. So he modified the device and uh, he started to be requested in dry uh, cities from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and also from uh, countries uh, close to Argentina to make it rain. It was very popular during those years but at one point the people wanted to inspect his machine he refuses and uh, he was accuses, accused of being a fraud and uh, the machine was later never found and using his statements to the press i decided to make a modern version of his machine of course without the idea of making uh, of, of of being a working machine so he talked about atmospheric waves and i took an Arduino with a barometer. I made some calculations. I presented the information in analog viewmeters. He talked about electromagnetism and I used a small electromagnet. He talked about 
uh, also uh, radioactive and chemical materials. So I use a stainless cup in, in on top of a Pelletier cell to provoke heat over the components that should be placed there. But today I wanted to talk about the more recent project I made, which is the My Fair Poetry. A few months back, I was hired to develop a system to show vulnerabilities in, in RFID cards. So this is a big antenna that is taking from the distance the ID of some NFC cards. And I wanted to use the knowledge of this project for something else, something not related to security and not related to business. And I started to investigate the MyFair Classic cards. These cards were built by Philips in 1994, and they are still being used today. These cards use 13.56 megahertz and are commonly used in transportation, tolls, loyalty programs, and also micropayments. They are passive cards. They receive the energy from the reader. And then after this, you are able to use the memory in the card. The memory in these cards is organized by sector and blocks. Every sector has four blocks. You are able to use three blocks of every sector. Since the last one has the, is the sector trailer and has information like the keys and uh, the access information. And uh, then the first sector only has available two blocks because the first block is used also for the card ID. In the case that you're using a new and empty card, the, the key is a default key that can be used. But even when you're using recycled cars, from maybe that we're using for transportation or, or, or micropayment. It, these uh, cards are cracked, so with an extra hardware, in this case, I'm using uh, iCopy. It's like a Proxmark device. You're able to crack the key and, and also use a card used before for other purpose. So with information about the memory and the blocks, I started to think about the rules of a new micropoetic, ephemeral micropoetic genre. The rule number one is that every line of this poetry type should have up to 16 characters. This is enforced by the sector and blocks of, of the card. The rule number two is that every poem should have three lines only. In this case, we will be able to use just one, one block of the card, one sector of the card, sorry, even if the card is being used for the purpose. And the rule number three is that every poem can only be read just three times. And after that, the poem will be destroyed. This is an example of a poem that has all the, all the rules explained before. And then, of course, a hardware is required. In this case, I've used an Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. This is the last Arduino Uno. Also, a small device to read and write the cards, the MFRC card reader, and OLED screen to show the poetry. The main schematic of the system is the following. You enter the poetry using a web page. Then you click write or read. If you click write, a JSON file is stored in the server. And the device made with Arduino, since it has Wi-Fi, queries the, this JSON file. If you have configured a write mode, the, the poetry, the poem lines are written in the, in the card uh, memory. And also, the counter is reset to 3. If you are in read mode, the card actually is, is, is read and the poetry is shown in the OLED screen and the counter is decreased and whenever the counter reaches zero the poem is deleted from this MyFair classic card. I have designed the, an enclosure using Fusion 360 and that is the complete device. It's a very tiny device, um, just a little bit uh, bigger than the card itself. And I, of course, publish the source code and, and, and all the information to replicate this experience. 
I wanted also to make some kind of automatic poetry generation. And my first option was to, I, I thought about ChatGPT, maybe using the OpenAI API. But I found some troubles with the prompts and the answers did not respect exactly the, the prompts made. In this example, the, the length is not 16 characters. And I also had troubles with repeating the the poetry and also with kind of uh, the, the cheesy aspect of the poetry generated by by LLMs and in this case by ChatGPT. So I decided to write uh, a separate script offline using just a combination of words. I have a noun file, I have an adjective file and a verb file and the Python script combines these three files checking that you are not exceeding the 16 characters per line. And I also added one rhyme feature. Of course, you, there's not, no need to rhyme the poetry here, but I found that the, the, the poetry sounds a little better. So if you're generating automatically the poetry using the script, you will also get that, that feature. Here I have three, two examples of poems made with this uh, script that I also uh, later on uh, have uploaded to some MyFair cards. In the first example, route and shout are the, is, is the rhyme and the, the 16 characters are respected. In the second one, position and vision. So sometimes the, the poetry doesn't make um, any sense, but I think it's uh, a, a new addition to, to this script could be adding at some point uh, an auto-completion using uh, an LLM and also checking, of course, the, the rules of this poetry. So this is an absurd device for an unnecessary micro-poetry. The main idea was that, that uh, MIFR classic cards are all around, are still being used today, that the encryption and the keys are, are already cracked. So maybe in a few years, a lot of these cards will be sent to trash and uh, with a system like this we can still uh, recycle them and using them for for another thing and the the absurdity of this device is also found in many other machines that i made as part of maker Conoculture. so that's all for today i have other projects and other machines and in my social media but uh, i wanted to present just one example Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ronnie. These were so incredible, especially like I'm I'm a huge reader uh, and I before I got into any kind of uh, open source tech situation, uh, I was a almost proud English major. So <laughs> seeing, <laughs> seeing tech that is based around literature is very exciting for me. It's very fun mm -hmm. to see exploring in that way. It's really neat. Um, so I'm really excited to explore more of your work and get really deep down in some of the cool stuff you've made. And we'll make sure to get the link to your blog so everyone can explore all the different devices that you've made. I'm also really excited to dig into this because I'm an artist too. So I really love seeing people play with technology in fun ways. So thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks for